but most importantly, before we get started, Can everyone hear me? Yep. Sounds like it. Okay. I want to dim the lights before we get started. Like that. I think everyone will see the presentation better. My name is Scott Bushy. I'm with the Department of Transportation, and I welcome you to tonight's meeting. We're here to look at safety improvements on Route 202 in Brookfield. Um, with me tonight, I have Jordan Pike. He's the project engineer. Jordan. And Jason Boyce, also a presenter, will be discussing right away um, components with the project. Project on Route 202 is for safety improvements. We'll be working from the vicinity of BJ's Coles at specific locations along Route 202, all the way up to the northern junction of Route 202 and Route 133. Format of tonight's meeting, we'll have about 20, 25 minutes of PowerPoint presentation. I'll be presenting, then Jordan and then Jason Boyce. Um, discussing right away. At the conclusion of the presentation, we're going to take questions. So I'm going to ask if you could please hold your questions till the end of the meeting. I promise we'll get to each of you. If there's anyone that would like to speak with us after the meeting one-on-one, -on -one, I have plans with me. Please come up and talk with us one-on-one -on -one after the meeting. Um, as an opener, everyone that came into the room, I'm guessing, hoping you got a handout. If you didn't, I'll get you one. On the front cover of the handout, it has all of our contact information. Phone number and email. Scott Bushy, top corner, bottom corner, that's me. Okay. Inside the handout, a couple of key pieces of information. One of them is the site plan for each location along Federal Road we're going to be working. It has plans front and back. And also inside the handout is a comment form. The comment form has a self-addressed stamp on the back of it. And it's set up so you can write your comment, fold it, got the address on the back, Put a piece of tape on the front with a stamp, put it right in the mail. If you'd rather send comments by email, on the back of the handout, Matt Vale's name is our transportation principal engineer, and he's also here tonight over in the back corner of the room. So if you'd like to email comments rather than handwrite them, please email them to Matt Vale with his email address on the back of the handout. Okay, moving ahead. As I mentioned, this is Route 202, Federal Road, Brookfield. The project is for safety improvements. It's about 1.4 miles in length. It starts in the vicinity of BJ and Coles, extends north along Route 202 up to about the junction with Route 133. We have four sites that we're working on in this vicinity. Site one, Chick-fil-A. Site two, Beverly Hard Scrabble. Site three is the southern junction of Old New Milford Road. And site four is the northern junction of Old New Milford Road. These were four areas along this corridor that were identified to have the largest safety issues that needed to be addressed. And that's what the project is about. DOT and the town of Brookfield have been looking at safety uh, along this stretch of road with the interest of doing improvements, I'm going to say, for probably 15 years. Um, it was originally a much larger scale corridor improvement with a very, very expensive price tag. And due to funding constraints, it never was able to move ahead. And in 2015, the town of Brookfield, through the local pre, uh, planning and zoning, local regional planning agency, which is WestCog, did a study to take another look at the area and see 
if maybe some smaller scale localized improvements could be done. And based on that study, this project was initiated. And instead of it being a long, full reconstruction quarter improvement, we've really narrowed this down and focused primarily on certain spots that need safety that could be done economically. And at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Jordan Pike, who's the project engineer, to go through the technical part of the presentation. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, these plans will also be in the PowerPoint will be available on the town website too so if you're familiar with that um, all this stuff is available there too. So here's as Scott pointed out before this is really um, we're focusing on these four localized sites and this is what we're calling site one. Uh, it's the intersection of Route 202 and Chick-fil-A and ShopRite Plaza. Now if you notice out here we have four lanes two in each direction and the key thing here is there's no left turn lanes to turn into these big commercial plazas. So this is what we call a crash diagram, and it kind of summarizes the crashes experienced at this location over the past three years, uh, 2015, 2016, and 2017. So these symbols correspond to crashes, which we keep in our database maintained by Yukon. So this point to point are angle crashes. Typically angles are the T-bone, the um, and they're often associated with injuries. Um, so they're more of a concern oftentimes. These this one with an arrow going ahead, this represents a car driving straight and another car kind of ricocheting off of it. That would be a side swipe type crash. And the two arrows going into each other is a rear end. So something you notice at this intersection is there's a, a, a large amount of rear end in side swipe type crashes. And it has to do a lot with there's no left turn lanes out here. And you know people wanting to make a left into either of these driveways don't always get a good gap in traffic because of the, the large amount of traffic volume out here. So oftentimes that inner lane stacks up with cars. And sometimes you're in there, you want to go through and you try to get out. Um, sometimes people aren't paying attention. These things lead to rear end type crashes and side swipe crashes, which we're seeing at this intersection. You can see this bottom number here. So you know this rear end, this represents six rear ends on this approach with one injury. Um, side swipes four crashes with one injury. So just on this one approach in the last three years, we got 10 crashes with two injuries just related to the inability for people to make lefts out here. So that kind of is telling the story of the types of crashes we're seeing and sometimes a tale of um, some type of, of the, the improvements that we're looking to make out here, which is going to be the addition of the left turn lanes. So here's a picture, which if you drive through here, I'm sure you're most familiar with. Uh, a lot of confusion. Uh, cars often creep into the intersection. Uh, either in the southbound or northbound direction, blocking sight lines, um, ca causing people to swerve in and out of lanes to get around traffic. Here's another one. Um, another key aspect out here in the corridor is there are no pedestrian facilities or there's not really any shoulder for bicyclists. Um, oftentimes the shoulders are, you know, two feet less than a foot in some spots out here. Um, those are all things we're looking to improve in the intersection. But you can see it's a green light, and this car had to hit its brakes for people running across the road here. Again, here's just another picture showing some of the congestion, confusing out here. This one's around lunchtime. Um, lots of trucks, landscapers out here during the day. Um, 202 takes a lot of truck, decent amount of traffic, truck traffic as well. Um, again, it's, it's just, you got this guy on the left. He's, he's opposing another car who can't even get in there to make a left because only ShopRite gets the short advance for the left turn today. Um, it's just a very confusing and frustrating situation out here. So here's back looking at the existing plan. Um, so like I said, uh, we're looking to make some improve improvements out here and a big part of that is going to be the addition of left turn lanes. Now a lot of that widening to build the left turn lanes is going to come from the strip of grass here below. So I'm going to click this slide and the it's going to update with the proposed plan, but you'll notice a lot of it's coming from this south side. So here we are with the proposed improvement to help address the rear end side swipe type crashes we're seeing out here, as well as the inability to make lefts into the driveways. It's the addition of opposing left turn lanes, one in each direction, both for ShopRite Plaza and Chick-fil-A and Savings Bank of Danbury. There'll also be a left turn phase to get into each of those. Um, when you stack up the left turn lanes across from each other like this, it allows them to run concurrently without hitting each other. 
The other big improvement out here is if you notice there's sidewalks on both sides of the road. So there's sidewalks starting at the BJ's and Coles Plaza just south of this location, extending on both sides of the road all the way up the hill to um, the Beverly Hardscrabble intersection. So that doesn't exist today, and I'll show you some pictures of that later, but there's worn paths in the grass areas out here connecting some of the bus stops and businesses. Uh, there's nowhere for people to walk except in the grass. So those are also improvements we're looking to do with the project. So the big thing here is for this site is the addition of the left turn lanes, the le protected left turn phasing, and also the sidewalks um, and the shoulders. As I pointed out before, they're only one to two feet today. We're providing four foot shoulders, which better accommodates bicyclists. Um, obviously the still um, greenway is just uh, to the east of here, I believe. And I think there's a planned connection to can continue it south from where it left off in the northern part of Brookfield. And um, so now people will be able to take their bike down this way. Here's the second site. Again, um, looks a lot like the other site. Uh, we're just north of there. So this tied back into the last photo I took. It's a very similar situation. Four lanes, two in each direction, no left turn lanes. Um, no sidewalks. Now, something to realize here, this kind of has slightly different crash patterns here. If you notice, there's a lot more of these angle type crashes, which often result in injuries. Uh, luckily here, there, in the last three years of data that we have available, there weren't a lot of injuries. But oftentimes, those T-bone high angle accidents are usually of the most concern because those can result in more severe injuries. One of the issues out here um, that's a little different than the last location is there's a traffic signal at um, the Chick-fil-A and ShopRite Plaza intersection. However, there's no traffic light here today. So it's very difficult sometimes to get a gap to go in to Beverly or Hardscrabble or especially getting out. It's very hard to find a gap because you need to cross two lanes in this direction and at least one lane in here. So it's a lot of looking both ways. Traffic comes fast and it's, it's often hard times to judge a gap out here. So I'm going to play a video, and you know, something to notice is this car has been waiting since we started the video, and they couldn't get a gap, and now that another car's pulled up, they're going to have to wait for this car to take a left before now they can leave the side road. Um, something else to notice is cars start to stack up behind both of these. So on the side road, it's maybe not as big of a deal, but on Route 202, with the cars stacking up, now you pretty much eliminate one of the through lanes you have. Uh, to send traffic through. So you take a two-lane road, it's now down to a one-lane road, um, which isn't good for capacity, and it's, it's not good for safety either. So now this car is able to make a left. Some of these are going to start to clear out. But this car still hasn't yet got to go. And now finally it's their turn. But also, another thing out here, there's no sidewalks. And they found their gap, but they almost hit somebody trying to walk across the road out here. So just kind of goes to show kind of all the things we're experiencing here and what we're looking to do with this project. It's, it's not just about motors, it's about the pedestrians too. So here's another back look at that site. Four lanes, two in each direction. Uh, no sidewalks, no traffic signal. So again, all the widening that we're doing is mostly on this grassy strip side of the road. And you, now you'll see we added a left turn lane in each direction. There will also be a traffic signal with left turn phasing that will help you get in and, in, and then uh, the traffic signal will help you get out of Beverly and Hardscrabble much easier than today. Um, if you notice the sidewalks here, the sidewalks continue on both sides of the road extending to the traffic signal. Um, something you might notice is there's no sidewalk on the west side of the road on the Costco side. And the reason is, is the embankment in front of Costco is very steep and it's very difficult to fit a sidewalk in there without maybe acquiring that whole row of parking and also building a wall to hold back the embankment. So it gets very costly. And um, like Scott mentioned earlier, there were bigger projects for this court in the past and, and the bill got too high. And so we tried to do as much as we could to make this project something that we could actually get done. So what we did uh, to help provide the best connectivity we could was extend the sidewalk on this side of the road. And that's going to run all the way up to the traffic signal at Costco. So here's an extension of that. So just going a little further north here toward Costco. This is the existing. Again, there's no more road work after this point. We've already built the left turn lanes and, and stuff out here. So it's just going to be the addition of sidewalk, 
which is on that bottom half of the road all the way up to the Costco. So that's sites one and two. We're going to move a little further north. There's a gap. You know, this is really a focus of sites. So this is the southern junction with Old New Milford Road. And as you may be very familiar, the, the angle, the sharp angle at which Old New Milford Road intersects Route 202, it's very, very hard to, to look over your shoulder and strain your neck and find a gap in traffic there. And part of that is because Route 202 kind of bends away from you and also dives down the hill. And traffic comes uh, probably about 43 miles per hour on average, a little, a little faster. And you know, with the amount of traffic and the speed they're going, it's very hard to find a safe gap. And oftentimes, all you get is right turns out here. People don't often want to make a left out from this side, mainly because you have the traffic signal on the other side. But it's also very difficult. So the, looking at some of the crashes here, you'll notice a lot of crashes here. This is one of the highest crash locations for a location this type in the whole state. So you can see the amount of rear ends occurring out here on Old New Milford Road. And this is just a three-year data set. Um, but we've looked back at years before this three-year, and it's, it's a similar amount of crashes. Um, the, the more alarming thing is the amount of injuries, too. You know, we're almost at 20 crashes a year, and about a third of those result in an injury. So you know, that, that has the biggest cost to kind of people's lives and society. And you know, that, that raises a, a lot of concern. So the way to address this problem out here is you got to bring Old New Milford Road back into 202 at a 90 degree angle. In order to do that, we're going to need to acquire these properties. And I'll show you um, the plan in a minute. But I'm going to just show you kind of some of the things out here. And what, you, what I want you to notice is the people next in the driver's seat really kind of turning to strain to really find that gap in traffic. Now, that's, that's one. But what you'll notice in this one is listen to the car noise. People really rev their engine. They're really hitting the gas out here to, to kind of get a rolling start into traffic, which obviously isn't safe, you know. So again, lots of neck straining, trying to find the gap. Some cars, the door is there, and you can't even see. You know, you have to pull up more. See how, see how far they're pulled up past the stop bar? Now this one, you'll, you'll notice this person's kind of looking straight. Then they're looking for a gap. This person finds their gap, and they, they gun it real hard, but it almost hits someone making a left in. So these are some of the problems we're seeing out here. So like I said before, what really needs to happen here is to bring this into a 90 degree angle. Um, and that's only possible by acquiring these properties and bringing the old New Milford in here uh, uh, across from this 317 Federal Road Plaza. Oops. So here's what that looks like. And there's very little widening, um, just a little bit on the frontage here. And really just bringing this road in here. <laughs> Now, what you may be noticing or looking at is, oh, well, it doesn't really look like the road goes through the building. Do we really need to take it? And that's a valid question. But if you notice these black lines right here, these represent the parking spaces in front of the building. And the red line, this pizza slice box, this is the, the state right-of-way line. Right now, all that parking exists in our property without a lease agreement. And it's not really, you know, the state wouldn't really look into a lease agreement here because um, we're uncomfortable people backing onto the state highway, especially with, you know, you think about people that need to hit their gas just to go straight. You know, think about that backing out, trying to look over your shoulder, find that gap, and then pull, pull forward safely. It's just, it's not as a desirable situation. Um, some other things here to, to notice and, and take, a, take point of is we're going to do some plantings here, some shrubs, maybe some small trees. And that's just to kind of visually block off the new road. So the old New Milford Road, old, old New Milford Road, would have connected in straight here. It's now going to hook in, and this other side road is going to be created, which is going to be called Wagon Wheel Way. And it's really just going to access the two business there, but it is going to be a town-owned roadway. In order to visually cut that off, because people are used to flying in here at 40 miles an hour, um, we're going to have to you know, put some plantings and a little bit of a berm to kind of visually cut your eye off so you're like, oh, I can't go there anymore. So that's going to be part of the project as well. 
Um, the, other th the other big thing here is the addition of the traffic signal. So no, no traffic signal today, it's a stop sign. Now with the traffic from the plaza combined with the traffic from Old New Milford Road, um, there's enough traffic here to warrant a traffic signal. And these will have left turn lanes and left turn lane fa left uh, hand turn phasing. So here's the fourth and final site um, with the scope of work we're proposing out here. And it's at the northern intersection with Old New Milford Road. Now if you notice, it's the same story here with the high skew angle, um, sharp angle coming into Route 202. The biggest difference here is there's two traffic signals to help you get out of Old, Old New Milford Road at least. The problem also is, is there's two traffic signals. So now you gotta go through one, sit at one for a while, and then just enough time to go sit at the other one for a while. So it's very inefficient because you need, these traffic signals need to talk to each other, but there needs to be extra phases in there to accommodate Old New Milford Road and this gap in between here. So it's just not a very efficient operation and there's a lot of unnecessary delay out here. Here's the crash diagram for this location. Um, there's not as many crashes at this location, but uh, to me the thing that really stands out here is the number of injuries. So 60% of the crashes out here resulting in injury. So I think the confusion out here, especially at this first intersection coming down the hill, you know, it, it doesn't really look like an intersection to me. You know, kind of drive down there and sometimes you don't always see Old New Milford Road up on the hill. And I'm not sure if people don't get it, but a lot of those rear end crashes are resulting in injuries, which isn't good. So in order to, what we're proposing to do out here is eliminate the traffic signal at this location. And the only way to do that is to make, eliminate the access out of Old New Milford Road by making it one way in only. Here's just some pictures of the congestion out here during the afternoon rush hour. If you've driven through here, I'm sure you may have sat in this, this backed up traffic out here. It often back up, backs up on Route 202, uh, also on Junction Road, Route 133 sometimes, and especially on Old New Milford Road where you can probably only get five or six cars through the traffic signal at one time, seven if they run the red light, and they often do. <laughs> so here's, a, here's traffic backed up on Old New Milford Road. And again, this is a very steep grade here too. Um, just not a great, it's not an efficient layout for two traffic signals like this. So by limiting this leg, it's gonna make the whole operation run a lot smoother. Here's people running the red light. Red light, this guy is going through and maybe this person too, they're hitting their brakes, but maybe they haven't decided yet whether or not they wanna stop. I'm gonna play a video. So you'll notice these two trucks here. Uh, this black truck is going to um, sit through the traffic signal at the second intersection as well. So as you can see, it's a long line of traffic here looking all the way back up to Old New uh, Huckleberry Hill Road. And usually I, I try to count them, but you should be able to get five or six through here. So that's the two trucks. Now if you notice, there's a red minivan that pulled up. And so this red minivan and the black truck, you'll notice they're still stopped there. Five, six, up oh, that person went in the red light. That was red. So that's the seventh car getting through on the red light. Now if you take a look back at where the traffic went to, you'll see there's still the line of traffic extending all the way back to Huckleberry Hill Road. There's a gap, but they're just slowly creeping because they're not going anywhere fast. Now if you notice looking back at the intersection, that red minivan and black truck are only getting to go through now. And so you have to wait through a couple cycles through this traffic signal just to get on to Route 202 and then again at Route 202 and 133. So it's just a very inefficient operation, during, especially during the afternoon rush hour. Um, other times of the day, maybe not as much, but certainly during the afternoon, it's, it's not good out here. So here's what it looks like today. As I mentioned, our proposal is to make this one way in which will help eliminate this traffic signal. So here's what that looks like. If you'll notice too here, we're also going to close um, the second driveway at Healthy Ways. And a big part of that is we need to do something or otherwise people are going to want to bypass through that driveway to get back around because now they can't get out anymore. So there's, you know, if you give people a way to go get around something, they're going to do it. So for safety, we decided to close that driveway and now 
you're only allowed to come one way in up Old New Milford Road. Now, it is a little bit further to drive around, um, but based on what I was looking at, it seems like a minute and a half, a minute and 15 extra. Um, it's probably an extra 100 feet or so further to get to the new intersection compared to just taking a right out of Huckle a left out of Huckleberry Hill. And then it's the length of Route 202 to get through the new intersection. But one of the positives is, is you're not going to have to sit through two traffic signals. There'll be one traffic signal with less phases, so it will operate more efficiently. So we don't anticipate to have that big line of traffic going up the hill on 202. You know, it's going to run much smoother, so it's not going to be that much more delay. So I'm going to hand it off to Jason Boyce, who's our property agent. He's in our rights-of-way office, and he's going to talk about some of the property acquisitions we need for the project. Thanks, Jordan. <clears throat> So my name is Jason Boyce. I am the project coordinator for the Division of Rights of Way. Rights of Way's function is to acquire all the necessary property rights required for the project. All the property rights are acquired in accordance with Connecticut General Statutes, sections 13A73 and 13A98E. And the federal regulations in the Uniform Relocation Assistance and Real Properties Acquisition Act of 1970 as amended. Property impacts associated with this project are total acquisitions, partial acquisitions, easements, and rights. So in order to do all those expansion of left-hand turn lanes and stuff that Jordan talked about, you know, unfortunately you do have to acquire some property in order to fit that in. <clears throat> So the right-of-way acquisition process. So every impacted property owner will first receive a letter of intent to acquire. That kind of is the beginning of the right-of-way acquisition process. Along with the letter of intent will be a property map specific to that individual property, and it will show the impacts specific to that property. Um, then a period of time will lapse where evaluation will occur. That valuation will be done to determine uh, the market value of the impacts to that property. Based on that valuation, the property owner will be offered a written offer of just compensation, um, and then the property owner will be given ample time to negotiate based on that offer. At the conclusion of negotiations, um, the acquisition will occur. It can occur one of two ways. If the property owner and the state reach an agreement, uh, an abbreviated real estate closing is done, which the state pays all the closing costs associated with that real estate closing. If an agreement cannot be re reached, the state does have the authority to acquire property via eminent domain. Now, a lot of times eminent domain gets a bad connotation. However, oftentimes it's something that's done in order to maintain a project schedule. And there is an appeal process set up. If the property owner and the state cannot reach an agreement, there is an appeal process through a judge that the property owner does have the rights to. So this is just an example of a property map. Um, again, it shows it's specific to that individual owner and each person throughout the project that has impacts to their property will get a property map like this specific to the impacts on their property. Um, the written offer letter will go along with it and then the acquisition agent will be willing to go out, meet with each individual property owner, explain the impacts to their property and explain the plans and how the project impacts their property. So <clears throat> there are, uh, as Jordan mentioned, there are a couple total acquisitions associated with this project. The state does have relocation benefits for any total acquisitions. Uh, those benefits involve advisory services. So there's a relocation agent assigned to each residence or business that is going to be relocated. Um, they help that business. So every situation is individualized and they help that business or residents through the process and to find a new site to relocate to. Uh, all moving and related expenses of moving from you know, the original site to the relocation site are paid by the state. Um, in the case of resident, residential relocation, there's a replacement housing that's available, and, or a replacement housing payment that's available. And in the case of commercial relocation, there's business reestablishment payments that are available. Those um, can be used to modify the new site in order for the business to operate the best way that it needs to operate in that new site. 
Uh, and of course, a right-of-way agent will provide a detailed relocation information based on the specific impacts. Um, so all property rights must be acquired by the design completion date or design, yeah, design completion date. Current DCD date associated with this project is February of 2021. And I'll turn it back over to Jordan to wrap up. And for any impacted property owners that want some more information, I'll be available after. I do have brochures outlining uh, the acquisition process and relocation benefits if anyone wants them. Okay, so just kind of summarizing everything together. Um, like we've been saying, this is kind of really a project that the town and the state have been looking at for a while. And we've kind of scaled it back to be, you know, this, these localized sites, you know, these four sites. So sidewalks running from BJ's all the way up the hill to the Beverly Hard Scrabble intersection. Four foot shoulders for bicyclists through that section as well. Then we have the addition of left turn lanes and left turn phasing at the traffic signal at Chick-fil-A and ShopRite Plaza. At Beverly and Hardscrabble, we're adding the left turn lanes as well as a traffic signal at that location. At the southern junction of Old New Milford Road, we're looking to realign the intersection. That's where we need to acquire those two properties. And we're going to hook Old New Milford in uh, so it becomes a 90 degree angle with Route 202. There's also going to be left turn lanes and a traffic signal at that location. And the northernmost junction with Old New Milford Road and Route 202 will be converting that to a one way in and also eliminating one of the traffic signals to improve the operations there. So we're not anticipating to do any detours to get this work done. Um, most of the work is going to be off peak hours. Um, paving during the, in the commercial area is probably gonna be at night. Um, and during the daytime, like up by the Old New Milford Road area, the pavement's wide enough where we can shift traffic around and work in the shoulder. Um, like I pointed out as we went through the sites, a lot of that widening is on the east side of the road. So it's all shoulder widening. Route 202 is just gonna get um, what we call mill and overlay. So we're just gonna um, eat up the first two inches and then put two inches back. All right, project cost and um, funding. It's gonna be a shared funding, 80% federal dollars and a 20% state match on that. The total project cost is six million, which may seem like a lot, you know, a sticker shock, but I, I have to remind you this is four locations and we're improving a lot of things out here. Um, four different sites, additional left turn lanes, roadway widening, addition of traffic signals, um, addition of sidewalks, pedestrian facilities that don't exist today, um, bike, uh, four foot shoulders for bicyclists. So we're doing a lot with the project out here and I, I think there's a lot of need out here for these improvements. We'd be looking, right now we're at the 30% stage in design, so we're, we're still very early on and the point of this meeting is to come out here and seek your input and I'll see what the public thinks of the project and hear people's feedback. So as you see here, we're not planning on building this till the summer of 2021. That's when shovels would go on the ground and it would take it about a year and a half to build. So with that, we'll open up the question and answers to get your feedback to see what everyone thinks about the project. Um, yeah, go ahead. Where does the sidewalk end? Yeah, so, so, to what point? Uh, so it goes from BJ's Coles, yeah, so. north on both sides, all the way up to Beverly and Hardscrabble on both sides. Then um, from this intersection, Beverly and Hardscrabble, it's gonna continue on the east side of the road to Costco. There's a push button there today with some ramps at the southern, um, at the traffic signal for Costco and Lazy Boy. So, so north of no, nothing north of Costco. Um, the, we looked at trying to extend it further, but there's a few properties there where they have very steep driveways and there's not enough shelf to build the roadway. So it was gonna be major impacts to those properties. And for sidewalk, we, we had a hard time justifying the cost. Yes, so we put um, early on in the project process, we alert utilities that were coming through the project and we have a utility coordinator on staff. We've been talking with them and so far we've highlighted, you know, which utilities will be impacted. You know, there's like 25 utility poles, there's a gas main out here, and there's also a telecommunications line underground at one point. So work, we will need to relocate those utilities. 
Um, and that's something that's going to happen um, around this stage of the process and moving forward. You know, we start that initiation really now when we have a 30% design, and it continues moving forward. What's the point for, that? for the utility person? Um, all, all questions can be addressed to either uh, Matt or Scott Bushy. Correct. How do you prevent people from coming at that corner and not hitting someone that way? Okay. I'm just going to um, rephrase the question, Sue, because I'm mic'd up in case people didn't hear. Uh, the question is, is if you notice, you know, the old intersection here, and it was already hard to see, and now we move the intersection further north, isn't it going to be even harder to see now? Um, right now, the way it is, if you did nothing, the answer would be yes. If you notice here, there's some grass, and we, we had to chase this driveway up here. We're going to have to regrade in front of uh, this property here, 322 Federal Road, and a little bit on the frontage here to get adequate sight line looking down. But you can see the green, how far we chased the grass up here. That's to kind of cut in a shelf into the side of the road. So it's still going to be grass, but we're just going to create a pocket by regrading the grass out so that you can actually see further down the hill. Because the road's not too steep, it's just really this embankment here and the, the driveways is what's blocking your view. You're welcome. In the orange? Yeah, I have two questions. Uh, just to clarify, so you're going to have uh, only most of the road from the north coming one way from the forbearance, so there should be two ways coming uh, coming from Federal Road there. Yes, so to clarify the um, operation at Huckleberry Hill Road and Old New Milford Road, it's going to be one, it's actually going to be bi directional at both locations because we still need to maintain access to the YMCA and um, the medical building here. So it's, uh, the dark spots indicate pavement work where we're going to be cutting the pavement and doing some work. Um, if you notice, there's no pavement work. So it's going to be, there's going to be do not enter signs over here. And to keep traffic out, one way arrows. Um, we're going to try to do as much with signing and pavement marking to really alert people not to go down that way. And your second question? Yeah, so I'm assuming what happened, if it was a traffic engineer, it might have come in through our permitting office, uh, the State Traffic Administration, and they work with the private developers when they come in on what's there and what's needed, and um, I'm not sure why that decision was made. They may have known that the region was looking at a, a study, the planning region, to, to make improvements out here. I, I'm honestly not sure. Yeah, but, um, can I just jump in there for a second? Sure, thanks, Steve. Yeah, I remember that that used to be uh, Burger King, and it was closed for years. So there was no need except to go into the bank, and so they didn't see the traffic there. So what we did is yeah. we went up to the commissioner, and that's how we started. Yeah. No, I, I, what I didn't understand is since you had the left-hand turn over to the south side, yeah. why didn't you have the coordinating left-hand turn at the same time? Oh, I, so we asked the commissioners to do that. That's what we look for, to give them the left-hand turn signal. And the commissioner says we only do our complete streets program. That's the policy of DOT. So that's putting in turn lanes, that's putting in sidewalks, improving sight lines. So they do, they only do the whole program. Uh, another thing too, just to also answer that thing about why not have a left turn in the other direction. Oftentimes when you want, you want a left turn phase for each direction, you really want the lanes to be head on, line up with each other, and you don't have that situation. So what's going to happen is you're going to have a traffic backed up and you're not going to be able to see around them. And it's, it's a similar problem. Um, uh, you? So this one? Yeah. The question I had there, in Beverly Drive, we get a lot of traffic in the beginning, and then we don't really know why that it's the wrong decision for the time that we need. My concern is now with that stoplight and a double yellow line that's not supposed to be there, that additional volume would come down Beverly Drive rather than into the residence. What's the plan or what the project is going to do to help prevent additional cars to turn that pass through the double yellow line, a light? 
Yeah, um, so you're asking what, what's, what are, what's the plan to prevent cars from going down this way? Like you had mentioned, uh, there's only a couple houses down there. I'm not sure why people are going down there, but we did notice that the no outlet sign is very small, and maybe we could make it a little bigger and bring it a little closer to the road. That was something we've discussed. Um, Uh -huh. Oh, to get toward the lake area? the entryway. Okay. Um, I don't think, I'm from the state, besides maybe making that sign larger or looking at what the requirements are for pavement markings through the Manual of Uniform Traffic Control Design, you know, I, I'm not sure if the yellow line has to be there with the signal route. So we can look at the pavement markings and the signing um, with the project, but beyond that, there's probably not much else we would do. But we'll, we'll consider it moving forward. We'll, we'll write down your comment and we'll look into you know, that type of thing. But um, when we're looking at some of the safety stuff here, I'm pretty concerned with the angle crashes. You know, and someone going down the wrong road and having to turn around to come back, you know, the focus of the project is safety on the state highway. but I do he hear how it could be annoyance for the residents down there. So we'll, we'll look at what we can do, but mostly it might just be signing our pavement markings. And I think we still want the turn signal and the arrow. It is hard to yes. Get. Yep, that, that, will be, that, that will be there. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Your comment's been noted. Um, are there any other questions? Uh, sir, are you in the blue shirt? I have a question. Um, I, I've watched the Jay Rahman renovation uh, last week or whatever it was. And if the DOT in town had been considering making these changes, would they have informed me before they went through all this work, through all this investment, that their property was probably going to be? Yeah, we, we met with them. Um, you know, before this process, not not early enough. Uh, we weren't aware of it uh, when we started our plans. The building was uh, still Layla's Bakery, and was kind of going vacant at the time. Um, it wouldn't have changed our plans. You know, the like like we've said, the pro projects and improvements out here have been kind of on the books for a long time. There's been plans with the town for a long time, having this that property marked for removal. Um, it, it is unfortunate. Uh, the the only uh, decent thing maybe is that it's not they're not gone under the relocation process. They'll just be re relocated to a new a new location. But obviously, it's not ideal. Um, I, sure thing, Scott. And I, as I mentioned, the DOT and the town have been working out here for probably fifteen years. Now I've done it. Okay, you can hear me now. So, originally we were, yeah, sure. Pointer, we were looking at bringing uh, Huckleberry Hill down to Route 202 and putting a traffic signal in back there, and that was done just on a concept as an aerial photo. It would have worked good operationally, but the grades were way too steep. So then we came back up 
this is probably around 2002, and we were looking at teeing this up similar to what's here. At the time, Lavelle's owned this restaurant, and I had spoke personally with Bill Lavelle, who owned this, and his mom had lived there, and then he has the real estate business here. So he was well aware what we were doing. The town was well aware. The trouble is, that at that time, this project had a lot of other improvements all the way down to White Turkey Road, Candlewood Lake Road. And we were also looking at relocating Gray's Bridge Road and doing a lot of work down there. The cost of the work was over $25 million. And there just wasn't funding behind it to get the work done. And the project was delayed and delayed. But these localized safety improvements that we're discussing tonight were still there. And it was a strong need. And in recent years, um, WestCog, which is the regional planning agency, picked this up through town support and said, you know, can you just look at this again and see if there's something else we can do? Something smaller scale that's tangible, lower cost. And with that, they came back to DOT. They looked at this concept, included it in their study as a recommendation for improvement. Now, at that time, um, Lavelle, who has maintained a conversation with me, I'm going to say for the past 15 years, he probably talked to me about every, every two years. What's the status on the project? Um, you know, how's it going? What's, what's looking at with the funding? He eventually sold it to a gentleman that owned this and managed it as a bakery. And for about a year, year and a half, I had conversations with him about the project. And he was aware of it because the plans were at the town hall uh, from the study done by the regional planning agency that actually showed the road through here with an X here. And, and the gentleman that owned the bakery knew about this when, when he had acquired it um, because Lavelle had told him. But, you know, at that time, the project didn't have funding behind it, and it had been stalled for a long time. So he had kind of taken a chance, and he opened up the bakery. And he was aware that we were going to acquire it eventually, and we were having a lot of conversations with him. And I'm just mentioning this to you guys to give you the history in that I want you to leave here tonight understanding that DOT's been communicating with everyone in this area along, along the years. And I personally have been involved here um, with Julie Connors probably since about 2002, I think the first time I met her, when we were talking about realigning Huckleberry, Ro Huckleberry Hill Road. So <clears throat> the man that owned the bakery, eventually uh, he fell on some hard times. He was in a very bad car accident. He wasn't able to work and, and maintain his business. And you know, he was pushing DOT to buy him early, which we were not able to do with federal, federal requirements behind the money that we spend for our projects. And at some point in the last year, um, he sold it to another gentleman. And uh, work had been going on to do improvements here with, with Ramen House, who, who he leased it out to. Um, DOT realized this had been going on over the summer. With the improvements were going on there, we reached out to the town. And we've had um, two meetings with the man that owns the property here, and then one meeting uh, including the attorney and, and the business owners of Ramen House. So, We've been communicating, we're working together, and as Jason mentioned, uh, with the project, we have relocation benefits in the project to help move this business to another location. Similar. Julie? Um, but my point was, these plans have been on file at the town hall from, from the West Cog study that was done. That's how the other adjacent owners there knew about it. Um, and moving forward, DOT does have relocation benefits for this business. Now, you know, we're, we're certainly sympathetic to the business that's there. And the first thing we did when we realized there was a new established business there, we discussed with the town, uh, what can we do? Is there any alternatives, anything else we can do here? Um, obviously, the project is not impacting the building, but the parking is a huge problem. That's going to be gone. And the parking in the front, as we mentioned, backs out on Route 202. That's kind of a safety issue. And 
you know, the project is for safety. So we started looking at, is there something we could do back here with the town road to provide safe, to provide parking for the business? Maybe they could stay. Um, and everything we looked at, there's just not an opportunity to provide parking there. But then I also started recently looking at if the building stayed intact, what does that do to the safety of the intersection? And it's not good. You know, and again, the project is all about safety. And if you're coming up here and you want to see to your right, now you're trying to look in front of this building and there's not much room here to see in front of the building. And you have to also consider at times, although we're putting a traffic signal there, there's power outages, there's storms. There's going to be times when that signal's not working. You need to be able to have sight line to get out of that road in the event the traffic signal goes out and it just goes on flash. And we recently did a sight line study to check what your sight line would be from here looking in this direction to see oncoming traffic to make sure that you could make a turn out of here safely. And what we found is if that building was there, you only have sight line for a vehicle approaching at about 28 miles an hour. And we know that the speeds out here are in excess of 40 miles an hour. So that's, that's a huge safety problem for us. So we really don't want to leave the building. But um, I hope this gives you a sense of the history and the thought that, you know, DOT just didn't come in here and not communicate with anybody. I'm going to turn it back over to Jordan. Here we go. Sure. I have one question. Uh, am I correct that the owner of the uh, Jane Ramen House business, the owner is the correct person, but the leasing the property or is he the new owner of the property? Can I answer that or? He's leasing it. Okay. He's leasing Yeah, it was just an unfortunate situation. But thank you for your comment. Um, yes? Hi, sorry I was a little late. William was asking, I'm the CEO of the Y. Could you just explain to me Old Milford Road again? So the, this, this intersection here? Yeah, how the one way and then the two way thing is going to work. I, I, I thought I understood it and then I just got, I got confused. There's nothing changing at the intersection with Huckleberry Hill Road? There's not. Nope, that's still going to be a stop sign. Um, two direct, you can take a left out of there because let's say you wanted to go from a Y to the Green Knoll Professional Center. Yeah. Um, you're still going to be able to get there. The axis change is going to be where this dark line is. So, you know, you're going to be able to make lefts in and a right out of here. But this is going to be a do not enter. So, I'm sorry. There's, uh, the do not enter starts around pretty much their driveway. This extra area right here is only for healthy ways parking. Yeah. And this little uh, piece of pavement there, that's for plowing. You can come in, yeah. So you can, if you're coming Route 202 southbound, from you can Lovell's still come in. That's a, this arrow. From, uh, oh, from Lavelle's, you can still come bi-directional that way, yeah. You just can't get out. You have to, you have to go back toward, okay. you have to go south to go north. Okay, so some education. Yeah, we could do we could do something like that. We'll we'll come up with something. Yeah. No, my last project we closed the road and we sent like a direct mailing to all those people, but with like five thousand, maybe we can't do a direct mailing, but maybe we can get something out there. Yeah, we'll we. Thank you. Uh, we'll your comments noted. We'll we'll do some outreach out in that area to alert people of the change in access. Um, yes, Julie. I think Brookfield has some great social media. I know that I saw about saw um, on the Brookfield Police Department blotter yeah. social media as well as um, there's a web a Facebook page, Brookfield Business and Happenings. And I think if you put it out on the Facebook page, I think it'll go to a lot of people. Okay, so we can use some of that social media outlet. Yeah. It's probably not that effective right now because construction is 2021. I mean, but as we get closer, certainly I think that's something we'll probably build into that later stage in the project design. So to make a push, you know, maybe early in 2021 to get the word out there that this is coming. Yeah, we've already been pushing this out on Facebook and our town website, and we'll continue to do that. Okay, excellent. Um, yes. Um, Devin.
Kevin Scanlon, the owner of Chick-fil-A in Brookfield, and I just want to thank the town and the DOT for responding, for listening, and it's it's just amazing to be in my hometown with what you guys are doing. So just thank you. The safety of my team and just the Brookfield High School kids that come at night to work at Chick-fil-A Brookfield, just thank you as a mom myself, thank you. Thank you for your comment. Yeah. Uh, yes, in the back. Uh, which, where's Silver Mine? Right yeah. Oh, the, yeah, junk, uh, Route 133. That right turn lane any, any larger? Yeah, um, we'll take a look at the traffic analysis again to see what, uh, how much, sometimes they call it starving the lane. So if the, the traffic's backed up, you can't get into this lane to make a right. Um, part of the problem today, in my opinion, is the additional phases. So the phase four Old New Milford Road and these extra phases to clear the traffic in between is creating that queue of traffic. When you don't have those extra phases, you're gonna be able to get a lot more people through northbound, and that also it's going to open up the right turn lane more. So, I'll take another look to see um, how far back we're stack, stacking traffic there. Um, it will be considered. I don't think under this scope of work we're looking to wide uh, lengthen that right turn lane, even if it was an issue. I mean, it would depend on how much of an issue it was. But if you notice here, there's a very steep embankment here, and it would be you know extra grading to support the roadway there, and. For a right turn lane, it's, it's an efficiency thing, and I think overall the efficiency is going to be a lot better than it is today. So I'm, I'm not sure we're getting good bang for our buck with that improvement because of the extensive work to build that right turn lane. Okay. Sure, go ahead. Oh, these, the straight line? Okay, that's, that's something we'll consider. It, it depends on how flat it is there. But if it's not a lot of work to line that up better, again, it comes down to safety, and now we're kind of extending the scope of work, but we'll consider, I can look at crashes at that location and see how much of an issue it is. But thank you for your comment. Is there a, is there a scenario where you ever consider a roundabout in this situation? Uh, I guess people probably don't like roundabouts, but I do. <laughs> I'm one of the few that loves roundabouts, so I'm always considering them. But uh, for this project, no. We, we, again, you know, there's been improvements proposed out here for a long time, and the, the bill got too big, and the amount of property often you need to acquire for a roundabout because it's a circle, you end up buying more property on the corners, and we tried to really, you know, make this a project of those localized sites and adding some of the pedestrian bicyclist accommodation a little further south. Um, so no, it's it's not, and I don't. I don't think there's enough angle crashes with injuries to really, you know, it, it would, it, we can do a lower cost improvement. I think the traffic signals and the capacity and safety stuff we're doing out here are a good fit, you know, as much as I like roundabouts. Uh, next question. Yep. Sure. Uh, which um, property are you again? Oh, okay. Uh, you're still going to have two driveways. Um, I don't have it on this slide. Okay, please see me after. I'll show you the other plan. Um, so that property, uh, the sidewalk, 
is fits in your, you have like a little island in the middle between the two driveways. Right. Um, we're not doing anything past that island really. It's just the sidewalk there. And I think you're doing some work. Um, one of your people called me last week to coordinate, coordinate the work. Yep. So yeah, there, we're not proposing any work there, but come up and I'll show you their plan and, and we'll, I'll, I'll show you. Okay, you're welcome. Um, did I see a hand over here? I've been neglecting the side of the room. Yes, sir. Yes, so there's going to be exclusive pedestrian phases uh, at Chick-fil-A and Hardscrabble and um, BJ's Coles. Nothing at Costco? Oh, yeah, so uh, Costco has one. So we're, we need about, the, so the traffic part isn't done yet. You know, that's, that's the next piece of design. Um, for sure, we know at the two heavy traffic, the three heavy traffic signals near the south where we see people running across the road today, certainly there's a need there. Um, Costco currently has... You push it and you get the driveway. So I think we're going to be evaluating whether or not to upgrade the equipment there too. Um, that's that's going to come from our traffic people. And with the new sidewalk, anything for uh, bus depots or people that take shelters in the storm, what stormy weather? So we've been reaching out to our bus people. Um, they haven't given us any feedback as to whether that's something they want to pursue here. And it's not something we always do. Um, something we talked about early, and what, which was part of the study actually, was bus pullouts. But nowadays, the bus companies actually don't like that because it's hard for them to get back into traffic. So um, we're not doing the bus pullouts. Um, we'll, we'll note the comment about shelters. We can reach back out to our, our bus coordinator. Bus actually does in the rest of their, their, their area. Yeah, there's none in the corridor today. And it's, it's a tough one because that's something that we have to work with the town too because I think they have some maintenance responsibilities on that item. So it's not just like you. So Jordan, we've been we've been talking to Hart, and uh, they looked at their whole whole routing plan, uh, number of uh, stops and shelters and such, and they told us about six months ago they have not yet laid out a shelter plan for this whole Federal Road corridor. Oh wow! But they plan on doing that now that we're doing our streetscape downtown and new projects coming. So okay. I will give Scott the name of our contact and the guy that wants to lay out all those stops, and they actually have a budget for shelters. Okay. So we're talking about it on the downtown end, and I'll make sure to get to uh, you and Scott about that contract for this corridor as well. Yeah, there's in front of some of the businesses where the stops are, there's still some grass strip there, so there, are, there is an opportunity if, if that's something what the bus company in the town is looking to do. And just one last follow-up. Is there any uh, street lights going up in any of these uh, sidewalks? So the somebody posed that question early on in design, and we have our illumination unit looking at it right now. Um, so that I guess it's to be determined is, is the answer. I would say I would love to see some street lights, and I'd like you to be coordinated with what we're doing up at the four corners. So. There's the, uh, the street lights went up at the four corners area. I think Jim, I think we're talking sidewalk lights. Side sidewalk. So we have street oh. lights. We're talking sidewalk. De decorative lighting, like yeah. the yeah. the sidewalk height. Mm -hmm. We're not proposing to do that with the project. Oh, I'm proposing. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a lot of added cost. I know, but you guys can pick it up for a change. Um, yes. Yeah. That is such a dangerous road to get around there. Um, so I'm happy to see what you're doing. The other question is kind of like a sidebar. I don't know, has, has there any study been done or any thought to, with that, with that old Milford Road change and with the new stop place, multiple stop place coming on Federal Road, any different traffic between going down Huckleberry Road and Rocky Road to get down to Southern Community Lake area? Is yeah. that, I mean, is that, is that a thought that might be the case? Well, you're saying uh, people... By putting more traffic lights along Federal Road, more people might try to, try to avoid Federal Road more and use Old Milford Road to get around it. The thing is, is there's not a whole lot of lefts. Um, so like, let's say the new signal at Beverly and Hardscrabble, that one's going to be green on Route 202 90% of the time. And to clear out the few lefts either going in or coming off of those roads, it's going to be pretty, pretty quick. So there's not going to be a whole lot of delay. Um, additional delay to the corridor. 
Um, in fact, the, the traffic out here operates more efficiently in some cases um, with the addition of the traffic signal. So like, so today, you got Route 202, the Chick-fil-A, and ShopRite Plaza intersection is a good example. With the left turns on the main road, it pretty much clogs up that second lane. So instead of having two lanes of traffic to get traffic through, we're down to one lane. And yeah, so by able to get the left turns out of the way, now you're, we're back to four, two lanes in each direction on Route 202. So it, it sounds a little weird, and maybe in the off-peak times, if you happen to hit a red light and get unlucky, yeah, you're going to get a little bit of delay. But for the most part, it's going to make this a lot safer. And, and safety is the focus of the project, really. But I, there will be an improvement in capacity in a lot of, a lot of places. Thanks. Um, any other questions? Yes, sir. On that Beverly Drive, Hot Travel Light, you just said that 90% of the time it would be green for several roads. Will there be sensors there? Yeah, so our traffic signals. Traffic coming from, from Beverly or, or Yeah, so the, we, our traffic signals, typically we put sensors on the side roads okay. and then in the left turn lane. <laughs> and the, 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 the traffic signal typically will rest, we'll call it resting, it stays green on the state highway. And when there's a demand for traffic on one of the side roads or left turn lanes, then it puts in a call to switch the signal over to, to, to allow access to those people. You're welcome. Any other questions? Does yep. That, does each phase have a certain frame length with it? Uh, time length? For, for phase one, two, three, and four, they scheduled them for a certain frame length? Yeah. So, it's based on need. So we get, uh, what we did is we, we ordered uh, traffic counts, and we measured the amount of turns out here, and then we kind of inflate them for future growth and look at, OK, how much time do you need to get a left into ShopRite Plaza, for instance? And, you know, or that paired with you know, how many left into Chick-fil-A. And it's, you balance the efficiency of the intersection. Um, so you try to give as little time to left turns in the side street, because the signal's really there for you know, the state highway, you know, the, the, the state signals, but the, usually you need a signal to assign right of way. When I say right of way, I'm talking about like driving school, who has the right of way? A traffic signal's to so right, I, yeah, I go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm actually, I actually mean construction work. Okay. Oh, construction sites. So that, uh, that amount of detail hasn't been uh, planned yet. Sorry, sorry, I just heard you right. go off a tangent on traffic signals. Um, the, what, ideally, in my head, I'm thinking we start from the bottom of the hill and work our way north. But there's also a lot of need at Old New Milford Road, the south junction. So maybe we do that first. Um, we haven't thought about what, what the staging sequence is. Sometimes we leave some of that open to the contractor because they may have a way to build it that's more efficient and you don't want to you know tie their hand I, I like to leave some room for innovation but most of the road work is off the road you know in the, the shoulder area so uh, for the most part traffic during the day shouldn't be as affected by construction be minor rain, lane closures or shifted traffic uh, yeah, the pavings just a, just a turn if you're putting in a, you know two left hand turn signals um, and you see you're not too short of traffic so we're going to go one lane each way Yeah, so what they'll do is they'll shift traffic around it. So they'll start widening in that shoulder area and build that part in the grass. And work that put the traffic into that widening area first? Yeah, so then once you build that, then you can shift traffic over there where you got to do some other work. Okay. Um, yeah, you'll just be dancing around. Um, so there'll be cones out there. Construction's not great. It's going to be an inconvenience for a little while, but it'll be better when it's done. Yes? So we haven't finalized um, the, the pavement markings here yet. We kind of just took what was there and, and mirrored it to some degree. Um, the result is obviously traffic backs up right there at the side of the automobiles going in to get into the hospital. Yep. So we don't go down to the south east or Yeah, um, I but agree. Obviously, it's going to back up traffic to the light. Yes. So we don't want that. So we're, we, are, we, we haven't finalized the pavement markings out here. And I was talking with our traffic engineer the other day about this. We, we need to look at how, how can we do this area better. Um, 
It's because, like you said, you don't want to have people stopping right after the new traffic signal to make a left. Um, then we're getting into some of the similar weaving problems we had before. So some, it might not be a turn lane because it's, it's tight here, but some kind of area where people can at least get out of the, the through traffic is kind of what I'm thinking. Um, but we'll have to, I don't know exactly what that looks like yet. But we're, 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 we're considering the pavement markings here, but there needs to be at least a little bit of room here. Um, maybe we can shift this down a little bit and then almost have some kind of reverse pocket or something. We'll, we're looking into it, so we'll, we'll note your comment and we'll try to see how we can fit you know, lefts in each direction there. Because there's lefts going into hard scrabble too. So it's kind of, you know, the signal's there for hard scrabble. So I don't want to start taking away from that to make room for a driveway. But at the same time, it's, it'd be, if we can get those people out of traffic, it would help. Yeah. But the traffic signal's there for hard scrabble. And, but we'll look at what we can do to accommodate the traffic in both directions. You, but you see what I'm saying? The two tra there, there's only a little bit of room here. So maybe by shifting this, we might be able to fit something. Is that, it's not an answer to your question, but your comment's been noted. We'll, we will further look into that with our traffic people. Thank you. Yes, yes, sir. I, I don't, I'm not sure by building the wider shoulders we're encouraging bicyclists because we have, you have an offline facility with the, is that the Still River Greenway? Um, yeah, no, I thought you were talking about Oh, no, 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 I'm thinking maybe if someone was there and they wanted to go get like lunch at Panera or something, there's at least something, you know, with a four foot shoulder compared to what now, but yeah, we're not looking at painting bike lanes out here. Sorry, yeah, I probably was, no, 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 just, just a wider shoulder. Sorry, sorry if I misled you. Uh, yes. Yeah, so dark, it just means new, new pavement. The widening is going to be in the grass, um, but there's going to be new pavement in the dark areas. Correct. Uh, yeah, they are. Sorry, there are. Yeah, so there's going to be new pavement from uh, probably around the red... Uh, the new diner that's going in down there because that's where the widening starts okay. so just just off of this photo is where the widening starts uh, so there's some new pavement here going all the way up the hill until you get to just after the 189 sports cafe that's it correct because we're not doing any widening there you know we'd just be repaving it and we have other programs that you know schedule paving for those types of things I'm, I'm not sure what is the condition. Typically we repave, I, I think it's a cycle like every eight years or so. Um, depends on pavement condition and need, but. Um, no, typically they know. Yeah, it, it's certainly something that's looked at through the design of the project, but the area near Costco Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, there was another question over here. Yes, sir. I had a question about uh, future development of sites. So we have a site uh, that's going to probably get developed up by you know, site number three. Over that's here. Right there. Yep. yep. What is the impact? Of this. I mean, how do you consider that? So one of, I forget, there's another proposed site um, further north. And I think some of the traffic volumes for that were incorporated. I'm not so sure about any traffic generated for that. Um, so there's not been an application for that site submitted to the town yet? Yeah. They will do a traffic study because they're going to have employees coming in. But we don't anticipate it will be a lot of traffic based on the anticipation. But they're going to have traffic. Yeah, typically under our process, the development would be responsible for improvements to that site. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Are there any other questions? 
doing? All right, well, thanks for coming. If you have specific questions, we'll be up here with plans and things like that, and you can ask us, and we're here for help. Sure thing, hang on one second.